Thank you and good afternoon everybody. Uh, thank you for coming uh, today. Uh, as you heard on the telephone, I have with me Taro Sparings, our Chief Executive, and Maury Leyland, our Group Head of Strategy, and uh, uh, the person who led the CEO operational review uh, that was announced immediately following our precautionary recall last month. So we uh, completed the review at the end of last week and the reason we've called the press conference today is to be able to share with you uh, the findings of that review. So uh, the review itself is uh, also being made available in a summary form. Uh, that will happen early next week. We're in the process of having it translated at the moment into various languages, uh, Chinese, Spanish, etc. Uh, but that will be available on fonterra.com, uh, as I say, beginning next week. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Tao. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, thank you for coming in, uh, again, on relatively short notice. Um, last week, uh, exactly a week ago, we were here as well, and we spoke about great relief uh, that there was no presence of Clostridium botulinum in our products and no food safety risk. That is last week. We are not going to touch upon that uh, today or elaborate on that. We are going to talk today about the findings of the operational review and uh, conclusions. Uh, that's going to be done by Mori. Um, there will be quite a lot of uh, content and there will be a lot of sharing with you uh, of the findings of us in the operational review. So uh, we, we would like to take uh, ample time for that and also uh, ample time for questions. Um, Maury will talk about the findings, what happened, why it happened, and that was yeah, a number of weeks ago my clear point that we know more or less what happened but why it happened, recommendations and actions. Some actions have been taken already, some actions are still to be taken. Um, <clears throat> this will be a Fonterra only discussion, so we only want to talk about ourselves to, uh, to today in the light of the operational review. We don't like to talk uh, about others or other topics, we want to focus on the operational review. Um, again, to repeat, the precautionary recall was the right thing to do with the information we had at that time. There was a minute risk, really, really a very small risk, uh, but you cannot take any food safety risk and we could not take uh, uh, responsibility for any possible consequences in the light of food safety. Of course, like I said before, that caused anxiety and confusion. We apologized for that in the initial stages, uh, but the next action we took was to really go with velocity on this operational review and make sure that we have answers to the table fast that we get out of the confusion and answer mode. Second reason is, of course, the milk season is starting. It's, uh, it's beautiful weather out there at the moment for our farmers. A lot of water, the good temperatures are good, so milk, milk is coming in, and milk is coming in uh, fast and at a higher level than last year. We look at strong demand around the world. We, long, we look at three consecutive strong GDT events, very strong GDT events, um, and that's the reason that we really have to make sure that we finalize this review as soon as possible. Uh, because we have to make sure that we run our operation in a correct way, high quality, food safety standards going into the next season. I've been talking about uh, the three V's and the four R's. Our three V's is strategy. Uh, that's where we have said, let's uh, <coughs> focus on the things we really need to do, but we are in a four R mode. Recall is completed. Review is operational review is going to be completed today. You are informed about that. That's not the end of the line because there's still a board review ongoing end of September. There's still a ministerial inquiry, but the operational review for us is completed today. Recovery uh, mode, we are very much into that mode already. So that's talking about market access in all our markets and consumer and customer confidence. We are in full swing on the recovery mode and we are starting uh, the reputational mode, and I would like to talk about strengthening our reputation. Uh, but I'm very sure that uh, after we have gone through the four hours that uh, we will come out stronger. 
back to the second R, that's the, the review. Um, I would like to hand over to Maury. Uh, we do share a lot of information with you um, and we would like to take uh, our time. Maury. Thank you. Let me talk a little bit about uh, what the operational review is. It's been a group, a small group of senior people who have been working for three weeks uh, since the first week after the precautionary recall with the purpose of asking ourselves if we had our time again what is it would we do differently and how going forward can we do things differently so this type of event doesn't happen again. So to answer this question we had to establish what happened, why it happened and how we would prevent it from happening again. The scope of the review has been on the way we operate our business, in particular the way we process milk, the way we manufacture our products and ensuring that we're reaching the quality and food safety levels that our customers, regulators and anybody who buys our products and indeed ourselves expect of us. It doesn't focus on any of the external organisations that we work with. So let me start with the first question, what happened? In March 2013, our normal testing uh, regime in our plant at Dharnam in Australia identified that we had high clostridium levels in product that we had made for one of our customers. We talked with our customer, we downgraded the product that was affected and we immediately began two parallel checks, one in our manufacturing plants and one to determine the microbiology. As we looked at our manufacturing, we identified that our plant at Hautapu in New Zealand, the manufacturing process we had used to produce one of the ingredients, the WPC80, was a cause for concern. The original WPC80 that we had produced had been suspected to contain a small piece of plastic. That meant that reprocessing was required, and in order to ensure that the product was appropriately filtered, uh, we needed to use a process which wasn't standard for that site. It was during this reprocessing that the suspected contamination occurred. The Hautapu Way plant reprocesses very little product. That's why, in order to complete the procedure, some non-standard equipment was used. A significant number of checks were put in place to ensure that quality standards were met. All the equipment was cleaned both before and during the reprocessing runs. However, our detailed analysis since the event shows that the original source is likely to have been a transfer pipe that has since been decommissioned. To, to determine the microbiology, we conducted all the tests we could at our research centre in Palmerston North. These tests determined that the strain was most likely Clostridium sporogenes, which is harmless. And although highly unlikely, our tests were unable to rule out the presence of Clostridium botulinum. We commissioned ag research to perform the definitive tests, and when they advised us that these tests showed the likely presence of Clostridium botulinum, we advised the Ministry of Primary Industries, went public and initiated our precautionary recall with our customers. The Ministry of Primary Industries subsequently, last week, commissioned uh, commissioned further testing and they advised us last week that tests had confirmed definitively that our whey protein concentrate is free of Clostridium botulinum. So that's a summary of what happened, but the important question is why did it happen? Each year in New Zealand we produce more than 2 million tonnes of high quality dairy products from, over, from about 17 billion litres of milk. In order to achieve this we have extremely tight quality control processes and systems, and we have very little deviation from our very high standards. This event occurred when a number of separate and unrelated incidents lined up in a sequence that we hadn't foreseen. The first decision was to reprocess the original WPC-80 and to not downgrade the product. In combination with this, the use of an item of non-standard equipment caused the contamination. Secondly, we had a one-off lapse in information sharing across two parts of our organisation and this led to delays in our testing. Third, the issues surrounding the event should have been escalated to CEO level earlier. And fourth, during the time of manufacture in Australia, we had a major upgrade of one of our computer systems at some of the, the sites that were affected. This was prior to the recall it had an impact on our product tracing and resulted in some parts of the tracing taking longer than it should have. And lastly, although we have very clearly established domestic and international product <coughs> recall systems, the size and complexity of the WPC-80 recautionary recall was a factor, particularly given that some time had passed since the product was originally manufactured 
and the product had had time to move into our customer supply chains and out of our control. So while the root cause is understood, it's important that we identify the improvements that we're going to make to ensure that we tighten our processes and we ensure that events like this can't line up again. There are four areas that we're going to be focusing our improvements on. Firstly, our people, ensuring that across the business we have the right focus on quality and food safety every day in everything that we do end to end across our business. Our products, ensuring that our world-class food production standards continue to be maintained at all times on all sites in areas such as quality control, testing, product specifications, wherever we are and anywhere we are. Our systems, we need to ensure that we have the strength we need in our product recall and supply management systems which allow us to quickly trace all the product that is in our control and that we have processes in place for collaborating with our customers to quickly identify product that is in their supply chains. And our response. We need to look at how we can increase transparency both internally and externally to improve our information flows and our speed of escalation. So we're turning these uh, areas of focus into plans of action and there are, there are three categories. Some actions we already have complete and are in place in our business. Some are immediate actions, we're either working on them now or close to completion, and a third set require a, a broader group of people from across our business to determine what the right plans of action should be. In terms of actions that we've already taken, we have created the role of Group Director Food Safety and Quality that reports to the CEO. We've strengthened the role of our Food Integrity Council, this is a role which has always existed, but we're looking at how we can strengthen its mandate and ensure we're looking in the right places got the right information to make the right decisions. Last week, we temporarily closed our Hautapu plant for a day. We went through the site to ensure that it was operating at the quality that we expect of it and that we'd done all the cleaning regimes that we needed to do to satisfy ourselves we can move into the new season. We also decommissioned the equipment uh, that was non-standard that had been used in the reprocessing. We have documented and defined our traceback procedures for Australia where we had the most problems and we've trained our people in how to use those traceback procedures so they can do them at a moment's notice in our new system. And this week we've launched a global food safety and quality hotline where any of our staff and contractors can call at any time if they have any concerns about food safety or quality. We have further actions that we're working on now and that we'll look to be implementing very shortly. We'll be looking at our employment agreements with employees to ensure that we have the appropriate clauses that give the same um, dominance of health and safety to food safety and quality. We're conducting a risk assessment of any temporary lines and equipment that we have in our plants. And we'll be strengthening our crisis management response so that we're able to respond with the right group of people at a moment's notice. We've also identified areas for further improvement that will require further review and will require the input of a broader group of people. This will take more time but will lead to sustainable change. We'll be looking at a comprehensive set of initiatives around our people and what we can do to work with our people to bring food safety and quality to ensure it's front of mind at all times. We'll be looking at how we approve non-standard processes for manufacturing and testing and we'll be conducting a full review of our standards and specifications and proactively working with our customers and with regulators on that. We'll be looking at our communication protocols both inside and outside the company to ensure that our large group of stakeholders have the transparency of information that they need. So that's a summary of the review, what happened, why it happened and what we're doing about it. So I'll hand back to you, Teo. Thank you, Maureen. Um, and I can assure you with, with uh, my experience in, in, in dairy, this is really very comprehensive, it's quite a lot um, of, of steps um, and I can say that, that what you see here is really for me lifting the standard from, from world class what New Zealand is already, New Zealand and Fonterra to being best practice or best, best in class around the world because that's our, our next aim that we really drive this to the highest possible standard in the world and if you will see quite a lot of out of the box and innovative uh, actions here, which are very uncommon in uh, in in other uh,
dairy operations around the world, but we really want to lift the bar to the highest possible level. So thanks more, there's a lot of information. Um, like I said, Fonterra and New Zealand, in my opinion, are world class in dairy. And I said when I came in, the envy of the dairy world, I, I, I still strongly believe that we're on the same page because we do have efficient and world class farms. We do have world class factories. And look at Darfield, which has just, Darfield 2 just started only a week ago. That's the biggest and most modern dryer on the planet. So we do have uh, fantastic facilities. We also do have some legacy assets where we have to focus on with our actions. Um, we do have a global reach. We do have, we operate in more than 100 countries. We have a strong customer and consumer base. We do run strong and robust quality and safety, food safety systems, but we intend here to, to lift it to uh, best practice around the world. And we are the, still the leading player in dairy nutrition around the world. So we're well placed, no reason for arrogance, uh, but we we have to focus on getting best in class in uh, the field of food safety. So as to summarize for you, the precautionary recall, yeah, was not a result of one event. When you come into such a crisis and a global recall, it's never related to one event. Yeah, this is really the result of a number of separate and unrelated events occurring in an unforeseen sequence. And if you compare it to other crises, this is always the case. There's always four or five uh, events related to, to a crisis. And when you hit a crisis, you have to make sure that you land the plane safety, safely, and that's what we did. So the findings, recommendations, actions are clear. Implementation, we have to do that now. Yeah, we are very uh, we are very much behind our action plan. We don't have time to lose. The season is kicking in and we have to get into the action mode. I'm very convinced that we will come out stronger and not only we as Fonterra, but also uh, New, New Zealand will come out stronger. And we have to make sure that we are a very strong team, Fonterra and New Zealand. But my last words are really um, what we need as a co-op and what New Zealand needs is stability. We need absolute stability in the coming uh, two, three months. And we need to have a lot of confidence, not only us as Fonterra, but the entire context of, of New Zealand to really bring New Zealand and Fonterra to the level where it should be. And it should be not only world class, but best in class. Thanks.